Gamer Braves. Hi everyone, it's Ben from Gamer Braves, and today I'll be talking about Warcraft Arclight Rumble. Blizzard's latest foray into mobile gaming which has left heads scratching. Is it a Clash Royale clone? Is it a cheap mobile cash grab? The game's not officially out yet, so preconceptions aside, it's hard to answer those questions objectively. But we did try out the alpha build of the game, so do bear in mind that whatever is discussed in this video may change when the game actually comes out. Based on the alpha build, yes, there are similarities to Clash Royale. But Arclight Rumble does manage to set itself apart enough to not be a shameless copycat. For one, it's a lot more PvE focused. In the alpha, there are almost 70 maps specifically for PvE. This large variation in PvE maps makes it a lot more like Overcooked, where you need to change your game plan when it comes to certain stages. It's really hard to take a strong lineup and demolish every single map, at least not in the alpha. Also, because of the focus on PvE, maps aren't just two lanes which you can deploy your units on. Some maps may have features like high ground, low ground, treasure chests, or even neutral creeps. As for PvP, maps are more symmetrical and units are locked to level 1. However, you can raise units beyond level 1 through what is called Valor upgrades, which you can see in this image. Each of these circular slots can be filled with a Valor upgrade which corresponds to the kind of unit it is. For example, if your unit in the fourth slot is a Horde unit, you can equip a Horde Valor upgrade on it to raise the unit's level by one. Each unit can have up to three Valor upgrades, so I recommend doing PvE content like dungeons before going off to fight other players. Note that the extra levels your units get from Valor upgrades also work in PvE. Valor and levels aside, what PvP maps are available also change from time to time, meaning that certain compositions or lineups will be better or weaker depending on what maps are available. Again, it's important to remember that Arclight Rumble focuses more on PvE, so you want to emphasize more on that content first. Experiment and learn how different troops work. There's actually a bit of depth to them. As for the monetization, there's quite a bit of confusion when it comes to in-app purchases and stuff. Some of you may have heard that the game is not available to pre-register in Belgium due to in-game purchases containing random items. But I want to reiterate that throughout our experience playing the alpha build of the game, we didn't encounter any gacha or loot boxes. The random item element likely comes from how the shop is designed in Arclight Rumble. Yes, you can buy whatever you want directly 100% of the time. The random element comes with what is being offered on sale in the shop. Arclight Rumble's shop is split into several different parts, and one of them is a 3x3 grid. You can purchase whatever's available on the grid, but once you do, the other items in the same column and row will be refreshed. That's where the randomness comes in. So while you may not be at the mercy of a random loot box, you will be at the mercy of what the game decides to put in the shop for you. While I do find it annoying that what you want isn't always in the shop, I still feel it's better than loot boxes. Also, while you can spend real money to purchase gold, the game's in-game currency, gold purchase options are limited each week, meaning you can't just empty your whole life savings instantaneously to buy gold in the game. So for those with gambling addictions or tend to splurge a lot of money in free-to-play games like me, that's a good thing. Besides gold, you can purchase certain limited time offers with real money, but again, this is a loot box, whatever you buy is what you get. One thing that I don't really like with the 3x3 grid shop is how the items are priced. You can buy XP for 50 gold, units for 350 gold, leaders for 400 gold, and talents for 500 gold. A talent is a special effect or ability that units can have that can do anything from increasing stats to outright changing the AI behavior of that unit. Some of it can be pretty significant, like making a unit ignore all other enemies and just charge straight to a tower. Based on the alpha, each unit can have one out of three talents. So while talents can potentially be extremely strong, having them price more than a leader unit does feel a bit too much. Hopefully, the devs would consider lowering the prices of talents somewhat because I feel that in Arclight Rumble, experimentation is a huge thing. So having a more accessible price for talents would be great. 
Another big thing that separates Warcraft Arclight Rumble from Clash Royale are leaders. Your deck or lineup in Arclight Rumble must always consist of one leader unit. Generally, your leader will provide the most impact in your deck and will usually dictate your archetype or playstyle. Also, the level of your home base depends on the level of your leader, so they are extremely important even if they don't come on play that often. I'll be giving a brief breakdown on each of the 12 leaders, so if you want to hear our overall thoughts on the game, you can skip right to this timestamp of the video. For the Horde, we have Cairn Bloodhoof. With a gold cost of 5, Cairn is a melee tank who deals AoE damage to ground units similar to what the Tauren can do in Warcraft 3. His leader ability, Shockwave, lets him stun nearby enemies, so he's a good choice for a tanky CC unit to keep the enemy busy while your other units do their job. There's also Gromash Hellscream, another tanky melee unit who, instead of crowd control, provides a buff to nearby units in the form of Bloodlust. At a gold cost of 4, Gromash is relatively straightforward to use, but you do need to be careful of AoE damage or spells that will kill the units that he's buffing. The third horde leader is Sneed, another tanky melee unit which seems to be the pattern here for the horde faction. Sneed's the most expensive horde leader with a gold cost of 6, but he makes up for it with his leader ability Sneed Before Greed which gives 2 gold anytime a siege damage unit destroys a tower or opens a chest. Sneed himself deals siege damage and is armored, making him more resistant towards physical attacks. With Sneed, you definitely want to field more siege damage units to make the most of his leader ability, but do bear in mind that some maps may have fewer chests or towers, making him less than ideal. But in the right map with the right composition, Sneed's really good at helping you snowball and control the pace of the match. Moving on to Alliance, we have the one and only Jaina Proudmoore. Despite being one of the most popular Warcraft characters, she does feel a bit underpowered in Arclight Rumble. Her leader ability, Arcane Intelligence, makes it so that the spells you cast are 3 levels higher when she's in play. On paper, this sounds good, but in the alpha, you wouldn't want to be running too many spells in your deck, and the extra levels from Jaina's ability isn't that helpful. Thankfully, she has a cheap gold cost of 3, and she can slow enemy units with her Frost Range attack. The Alliance also has Maev Shadow Song, who, in my opinion, is one of the better leaders in the game. Maev costs 6 gold to play, which is rather expensive, but her leader ability, Master Assassin, makes it so that every time you play an unbound unit, her gold cost drops by 1. Unbound units in Arclight Rumble are basically the minor from Clash Royale. You can play them anywhere on the map. Maev herself is unbound, so you can basically run a deck dedicated to annoying your opponents by letting you summon units anywhere. Also, she has stealth, so any enemy unit that doesn't engage her in combat will basically ignore her. Then we have Tyrion Fordring, the paladin leader for the alliance. At a moderate gold cost of 4, Tyrion's job is to tank and to heal. His leader ability Holy Light allows him to heal nearby units, so he basically becomes a super high priority target for the enemy team. The most annoying thing you can do is to place two Tyrions next to each other, so your opponent would have a hard time trying to take out two tanky healers who just wouldn't die. We're halfway through the list, and for the beast faction, there's Chalga Razorflank. Chalga is the cheapest leader in the game with a cost of only 2 gold. On top of the cheap cost, Chalga's a ranged unit, and any ground enemy target that she hits is affected by Entangling Roots, her leader ability. If a melee unit gets hit, they basically just stand still and watch Chalga murder them. It doesn't really do much against ranged units, but if a tower gets hit, the structure wouldn't attack at all, making her really dangerous if left unchecked. The Beast faction also has Hogger, a 4 gold cost leader who basically functions as a late game carry. Hogger's leader ability Relentless increases his movement and attack speed by 35% each time he's deployed. As you can imagine, Hogger works really well in a cheap composition, letting you cycle through the units so that you can deploy him more often, turning him into a bigger and bigger threat as the match progresses. Moving on to the Black Rock clan, Ren Blackhand is an expensive 6 gold cost leader for the faction. Ren starts as a ranged flying unit, which is already annoying enough, but when he receives sufficient damage, he jumps off his mount and continues the fight as a tanky melee ground unit. His leader ability, Black in Disguise, reduces the cost of all your other flying units by 1 gold, so you better have solid ranged or anti-air options when you're facing him. Black Rock's second leader is General Drakisath. 
with a gold cost of 5, the Dragon Spawn Ruler's leader ability causes nearby enemy units to receive 50% more elemental damage. Not a lot of units, even tanks, resist elemental damage, so he's really good at dealing with tanks or other strong units. Drakisath himself deals elemental damage, so you want to support him with other units who can deal elemental damage to make the most out of his leader ability. The fifth faction of the game, the Undead, also has two leaders, the first of which is Baron Rivendare. The Baron's leader ability, Army of the Dead, summons skeletons from towers that you control periodically. It works even when he's not in play, making him a constant threat throughout the match. With a gold cost of 4, the Baron himself is a pretty strong unit. He moves fast, is armored, and deals elemental damage. So even without his skeletons, he's still a force to be reckoned with. Finally, we have Blood Mage Thalnos, who is basically a superior Jaina if you want to play a spell-oriented deck. Thalnos can level up every time when you cast a spell when he's in play, thanks to his leader ability, Dark Ritual. Every level up grants a noticeable increase in all stats. So if you spam enough spells and keep Thalnos alive, he basically becomes a god. He's a ranged elemental AOE unit with a gold cost of 4, so you better have some sort of solution to deal with him quickly. These are all the 12 leaders in Warcraft Arclight Rumble, but do bear in mind that this is a rather surface level breakdown of what they can do in the game. Every troop and leader can equip one of 3 talents, which can drastically change the way they function. We couldn't try out every talent for all the leaders in the game during the alpha, but yeah. There's a lot of customization and team building involved. Overall, what really surprised me with Warcraft Arclight Rumble is that despite appearing like a casual game, there's a lot of depth and complexity, even more so than Clash Royale. Again, all of these observations are based on the alpha build of the game. So whatever I say in this video may not necessarily represent how the final product is gonna be like. The game does have a lot of potential, but my biggest concern, like a lot of others, is monetization. But if the devs could balance that out, there's a good chance it can be an engaging game. At first glance, it does seem like the game is only targeting casual players, but considering the level of depth, customization, and experimentation from the gameplay of the alpha build, Warcraft players might want to give the game a shot when it comes out. What are your thoughts on Warcraft Arclight Rumble? Let us know in the comments down below. If you want a written summary of what I've shared here, you can read the article which we've linked in the description. This has been Ben from Gamer Briefs. I'll see you in the next video. Hey there! Thank you so much for watching our videos. Don't forget to give us a subscribe if you'd like to see more, and like so we know what kind of content you want to see. Got suggestions for new content? Let us know in the comments below too. Thank you so much again for watching. Take care dudes.